Over the past year, I've talked a lot of smack about the Trash Can Mac Pro. And, you know, honestly, I felt bad. I, I wanna give it a fair chance. So, I bought one. And we're gonna see if it's still as bad as everyone thinks it is. This video is sponsored by Privacy. With Privacy, you can buy things online using virtual credit cards instead of real ones, protecting your identity and bank information on the internet. As a special treat, Privacy is offering you guys a free $5 just for signing up by heading over to privacy.com slash Luke Miani. Look at this tiny box. Sorry, anyway, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video about the stubbornly high prices for the Trash Can Mac Pro. And I was just so confused and quite frankly, a little bit frustrated by how expensive these things are, given that they're six years outdated in terms of the hardware. And yes, I know they sold them up until like two months ago. So many people on eBay, they're like, oh, well, I bought mine in 2017. So if you're a watcher of the channel, you may remember almost a year ago in, I think it was April, 2019, I bought the cheapest trash can Mac Pro on eBay to see if it was any good. I paid $1,300, I got a six core model. Now, weirdly enough, that computer still to this day was probably the best deal. I would still have picked that over this if it had been available. So let's unbox this and I'll tell you what I got because this is the weirdest situation. I'm talking about a video that I made almost a year ago and it still was the best deal, arguably, on a 2013 Trash Can Mac Pro. How is that even possible? How is it possible that this computer didn't depreciate at all over the course of a year? That's crazy. All right, here it comes. There we go. Ah, there it is. So what is it? Well, this was 1200 bucks, the cheapest Mac Pro that I could find on eBay. And it's not that special. Whenever I try to make videos about buying the cheapest of something, I try to find something unique, something special, like, ooh, it's the cheapest, but it's super upgraded. This is pretty much stock, except for one upgrade. This is the quad core model. Yeah, you heard that right, quad core. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, and it's got the D300 base graphics. The only thing that's upgraded is it has a 512 gigabyte SSD, which actually now that I mention it, why don't we check out here. That looks like a factory Apple SSD and it looks like we have the factory RAM as well. So this has pretty much been upgraded only through Apple. Nothing has been done after the fact. It's honestly not that good, not that good on paper. So why don't we go and see if there's anything redeeming once we get this thing booted up. All right, let's fire up the old girl. Mmm, smells like computers. Oh, look at that, we're ready. Press Command F5 now to turn it on and set up. Oh, uh, no, no. I don't wanna use voiceover, stop it. la da all of this is getting cut out. All right, so I've downloaded some benchmarks. We're gonna start off the test with Geekbench 4, just to sort of get a baseline of where this thing falls. So this computer has a Xeon E5 1620V2. It's honestly a pretty low end quad core processor and it should perform similarly to a Core i7 3770 or a 3770K. Oh, oh dear. That's not good. 14,606 with under 4,000 in the single core. So single core, pretty weak, as you would expect, it's older. That means we're being significantly outperformed by the base model 13 inch MacBook Pro. Yikes. So Cinebench R20 should give us a better idea of multi-core performance. And as a measure of how well it's doing, we'll see how hot it gets. 1200 bucks for, for a quad core. It's crazy. There's a Core i7 4850HQ on there, 2.3 gigahertz, it scores 1509. So that would be a late 2013 15 inch MacBook Pro. And then 1647 on there is what they have for a Core i7 6700HQ, which would be a base model 
late 2016 MacBook Pro. Now, both of those are mobile processors, and this is a Xeon, even though it's a little older, I'd like to think that at the very least we can beat those, hopefully. Oh no, oh no, that's not good. 1476. So what that means is that this, which is an overpriced three-year-old laptop, beats it handily, and this, which is a well-priced six-year-old laptop, also beats it. So that's not good. This is half the price, and you're getting pretty much the same CPU performance out of this old ass laptop. So what I wanna do next is test out the graphics. By the way, if you wanna see how this computer compares to your system, for example, run Unigen Heaven on the Extreme preset, and we'll get comparable numbers. Leave those down in the comments below. What does your computer get, and how much did you pay for it? So while we're on the subject of graphics, why don't we talk about the weird graphics situation in this Trash Can Mac Pro. All of these Trash Can Mac Pros have dual graphics. This one is the base model, and it has the D300 graphics. So that's dual D300s. They have two gigabytes of VRAM each, four combined. Next, you have the D500s, and those each have three gigabytes of VRAM, so six in total. And then you have the D700s. Now those are based off of the Fire Pro W8000, I believe, which was a workstation card that came out in 2013. And it was essentially an underclocked version of those. It has six gigabytes of VRAM each for a 12 combined. It's really, really expensive to buy a trash can Mac Pro that has those graphics. They are so proprietary. They're these custom boards that are made specifically for this machine. You can upgrade them, but only with other Mac Pro graphics. So you could put a D500 or D700 cards in this Mac Pro and upgrade the graphics that way, but they're so unbelievably expensive that it's not worth it. Hey guys, hey, hey guys, don't, don't upgrade, upgrade the, the graphics. graphics. So 632, where does that put it? Well, actually that pretty much puts it within spinning range of something like a Radeon Pro 560X which is a pretty low-end graphics card. You could probably beat this with like an RX 560 or 570. Heck, my late 2013 iMac over there, which has GTX 780M graphics, would, would outperform this pretty easily. Hey there, it's me, your old pal, Brand Luke. Like normal Luke, but brand. I'm here to tell you guys about Privacy.com, a great way to keep your personal information safe and secure by using virtual credit cards instead of real ones. In addition to the free account, which lets you use up to 12 virtual credit cards per month, Privacy has now launched two paid versions, Pro and Teams. The Pro account costs $10 per month and comes with everything included in the free personal plan, plus an additional 1% cash back on all purchases, up to 36 cards per month, and more security and privacy features. Teams, on the other hand, costs $25 a month, gives you access to everything that is included in the Pro version, plus you get a dedicated account manager, access to 60 cards a month, and transaction limits tailored to your business needs. Regardless of which plan you choose, you can get a free $5 just by signing up at privacy.com slash lukemiani with the link in the description below, and there's no credit card required to sign up. You mischievous little thing, you. Why the heck is this a $1,200 computer? Well, there's no competition. There's no other option. Here, think about it this way. Let's say you want a Mac. You want a desktop and you want to have your own monitor. What options are there? Well, there's the Mac Mini and this, and that's it. And the Mac Mini doesn't even have dedicated graphics where this does, at the very least, they're not good. In fact, you could say they're quite terrible, but at least it has something. For 1200 bucks, you can buy yourself a six core Mac mini, either the i5 or the i7, that's going to demolish this Mac Pro. However, there are a few advantages to the Mac Pro over something like a Mac mini. Have you ever tried to get inside a Mac mini? It can be a bit of a hassle. Watch this pretty easy to get inside of this thing. Now, as weird and non-standard as the Mac Pro is, 
it's actually decently upgradable. And you can see right over here, we have an upgradable SSD. Now OWC sells some big chunky boys that you can put in here that will allow you to put two terabytes in this Mac Pro. So that is very interesting. You can also upgrade the RAM. The RAM is very easy. It uses pretty standard DDR3 1866 megahertz ECC RAM. So it's not that expensive or difficult to upgrade the RAM in here. And then of course there's the processor. Now this is in my opinion, the biggest drawback to something like this particular machine because that quad core processor is hot garbage, quite literally hot garbage. This computer is quite warm, but with a significant amount of disassembly and manual labor, you can actually upgrade the CPU. So you could put a 12 core processor in here. At the very least, you can upgrade the CPU in this Mac Pro. So that's what I'm gonna do. You think I would mention upgrading the CPU and then not do it? What is this? Communist Russia? Of course we're gonna do it. So make sure to stay tuned for that video where I'm going to make what is, I'm pretty sure, the least expensive 12 core trash can Mac Pro that has ever been made or sold. Huh? Aw oh man, not again. It looks like normal Luke forgot to film an outro for this video. That guy's such an idiot. So while I don't think this Mac Pro is a good value, I'm gonna withhold judgment until the next video when we do some upgrades to see if maybe something changes then. In the meantime, I think it would be really awesome if Apple were to launch a Mac Mini Pro sort of in this same footprint, but with dedicated graphics and more modern hardware. I think that would sell really well. So that's gonna do it for this video. As usual, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Please consider checking out my subreddit in the description below if you have any questions, and I'll see you all in the next video.